Welcome back to another episode of Beyond Rockets. In this episode, I sit down and talk with Chris Wade, a local artist specializing in acrylic ink. First off, thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with me. Would you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, um, I paint spacey, dreamy, surreal landscapes um, with abandoned rockets in them. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's about, that's about are, can, yeah. are you originally from Huntsville or did work or family bring you here? I'm from here. Is so? Did you originally go to school to be an artist, or is most of the skills you've learned to being an artist is self-taught? I mean, I've been. My dad was a, a technical artist, and my mom's side of the family, um, you know, like my sister, my grandma, they paint, but mm -hmm. you know, without like the technical precision. Okay. So, you know, I, I get it from my dad, but then I went to, I went to school for graphic design in my mid twenties, and that's when I learned how to really. Uh, tighten up my skill and, mm -hmm. and actually have a vision to it so is have you always had your own studio for your art or did you after college did you get a job working somewhere else doing your art for them uh no i um i used to come here at low mill uh just because i love the place would set up at the artist market at fly monkey but then uh it's about four four and a half years ago um i met my friend Dave, who uh, Dave Jolly, who invited me, like we just clicked, and he invited me to join him in the studio as a as a studio partner, and um, then I ended up in there, and then about a year and a half ago, ended up in my own studio. So, is most so you prior to coming into Low Mill, really all your artist jobs and all your uh, commission for art has just been stuff that you've painted yourself and just trying to. S and try to sell yourself through low mill or through other means like Instagram and Etsy and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm on Instagram, Etsy. I'll get a lot of my business from, seems like most of my orders seem to come through Facebook okay. or, you know, different Facebook groups that uh, people share my work in. Um, I'm also, I also have my work in the Nova Space Gallery out in Tucson. It's uh, for space artists. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I've, I've made some decent decent contacts that way um yeah have <laughs> have you always done art based on like the that, that that like surreal sort of space theme or has your kind of genre which you've painted and created art kind of changed throughout the years i mean it was always um growing up i i, I really just kind of drew whatever but i was honestly bored with art and then in my early 20s i started doing some stuff that was more i realized i had synesthesia and uh, you know, which is where you see things in your mind when you hear when you hear music, and uh, so that's when it gave me the idea to do kind of dreamy concepts for my art, and um, and then I, um, you know, it was like so I kind of accidentally ended up delving into surrealism without mm -hmm. even knowing what that was, yeah, and uh, or you know, without remembering it from class <laughs> and. Uh, then when I was in college, I, a prompt from a professor, she said, do three works that represent how your upbringing affected you. And I thought, no, it's stupid. And then, uh, then I realized that I've been having a lot of dreams of finding abandoned rockets. And I thought, huh, what if I found one? You know, what if I was a kid again and I found a rocket, you know, in the woods, I'd probably have to build a tree house and <laughs> I'd have to invite all my friends and just kind of got my gears turning. And then I, one of the sketches I did kind of got m me realizing, oh, that's exactly what she was asking me to do. Like, yeah. this rocket with the tree through it is exactly how I felt my upbringing affected me. And uh, kind of that representation of, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, abandoned places or the, you know, the wrong things being planted in us early on as kids mm -hmm. and uh, turning into something that can be detrimental to who you're, designed to be but um that's when i that's when i started the whole space thing and it's evolved from there has do you think going to school for a degree and actually getting a degree uh in the university has benefited you for what you do now or do you or, or do you ever regret going to school and spending that time <laughs> to learn that skill no i don't regret going mm -hmm. um if anything i I wish I had gone for graphic design the first time around because mm -hmm. I was going for music industry originally. And, uh, but instead, 
That's that's about the only thing I wish I had done differently. Really, is go into graphic design to begin with, and you know, I kind of used it as an excuse to take art classes. But <laughs> I don't. Re I, I enjoyed my time there. Yeah. But um, honestly, I haven't used my graphic design degree really at all. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever do any freelance stuff for people, graphic design work, or is most of your stuff just art you do for yourself? For I've your occasionally studio? done done freelance stuff. Like I did a, a mission patch for a guy who was doing a um, simulated Mars mission out in the desert with a group of people um, in in a habitat. So I I designed the patch for that. Okay. Um, you know, a few other things here and there, but honestly, I'm just kept busy with doing all this stuff mm -hmm. so is the is the studio and the art you do now is that your full-time job or do you yeah. do other things on the side yeah it's full-time i tried doing uh you know i worked at space camp just because i love the place i wanted to get more ideas for my art mm -hmm. you know get a behind the scenes look and i loved it i loved i loved working with kids yeah um because you know before that i taught guitar for about six years and uh but yeah i loved working with kids and so i I um, I didn't want to leave, but you know this was becoming more full time, and that, you know I left, and then I went back just because they had a photography department opening, and I thought, man, I missed the place. It'll be fun to go back, and then I realized I was getting behind and and this. <laughs> yeah, your actual stuff. So then the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, kind of put my job at a halt just because Space Camp closed down and. Um, and I've been able to get a lot more done since. So, yep. you know, I realized, okay, maybe I do need to make this full time and not, not try to be employed by somebody else. Yeah. You know, have you always wanted to be your own boss or is that something that kind of, kind of developed over the years? And, uh, cause I know a, a lot of people just talk about how they've always wanted to be their own boss. They always wanted to kind of make their own hours at their own rules. Was that ever your goal or was your goal just to kind of start your own art and it just happened that you're your own boss? When I was a teenager and in my early twenties, my goal was, you know, <laughs> my goal was mainly be a, you know, musician full time. And, uh, and then it just didn't pan out that way. And, kind of spent a while trying to figure out my life, trying to figure out who I even was anymore. And uh, then I just got fascinated with art in my mid twenties. And, and uh, you know, it's probably 27 or so when I, yeah, you know, 27 when I graduated, but I got fascinated with art probably at 26. I thought I was gonna end up being a graphic designer, mm -hmm. working for somebody. And then I just got carried away with the idea that I, that, you know, the trajectory I was on, no pun intended, <laughs> rockets. Um, and it was, um, you know, I just kind of got fascinated and, and had tons of ideas. And it just it, seemed like a good fit at the time. It was yeah. just kind of like you just kind of fell into it almost. Yeah, well, you know, I had uh, some friends who had a studio down the hall called Love Huntsville, um, which they eventually started Alchemy Lounge. But, uh, when they had Love Huntsville, before they ever had Alchemy, I ran this idea by them. I was like, hey, so I have this idea that, I, you know, these, these rockets with trees growing through them that I've been working on. Here's the theme behind them. And I really feel like that would be go hand in hand with your message if you'd want to, like, you know, maybe feature them for a month or so on your wall. And we ended up just brainstorming and planning out an entire, you know, I guess evolution of the project where it went from these overgrown rockets to these overgrown rockets having tree houses to you know and, and just past be past that beyond that and uh, then um, we ended up just you know having like planning a whole entire like 15 painting show Oh, wow. That ended up being up on third floor, and it was really cool. Um, oh, was that like the first kind of in? What was was that like your first kind of coming out into the into this like art that you do now? As a serious artist, yeah. Okay. That, that was that was kind of my besides doing some gallery shows at at the school I was at at Athens State. Um, you know, and I think I did one or two at Calhoun before that. Mm -hmm. um, but as a, you know, that was one of those shows where like all the students had their art up. Yeah. But 
you know, now, I don't know, like, after that, like, my first show after I graduated, my first real show, solo exhibition, was up on third floor, um, filling out a gallery with my paintings. And then, you know, that was, like, kind of in collaboration with Love Huntsville. And it was mm-hmm. really fun, really cool. Yeah. And then, you know, I've since then, I've had two solo museum shows. Um, wow. First one, Gadsden Art Museum, 20 paintings in a the gallery. Then the following year, I was at uh, Montgomery Museum of Fine Art, 25 paintings in a gallery. And, uh, you know, plus a bunch of, you know, a bunch of other art shows and a couple small gallery shows. Um, mostly, I've been working through the studio and people finding me here or online and during the pandemic, all the shows got canceled. I mean, yeah. you know, I was, uh, it kind of had to restructure how you kind of marketed yourself at that point. I yeah. mean, I, I, I bet like not, not only is the showings and stuff like that, for like the exhibits of your artwork, kind of like the an exciting moment kind of like, cause, yeah. cause it showcases your art to people that who have never seen it. And it also yeah. kind of allows you to get business too. Right. But without having that, you're kind of like, how do I now showcase my art to people that would not normally see it or would come to those exhibits, but are not seeing it on Instagram or, wherever right. it might. So it's kind of just trying to figure out how you can rebrand yourself and being able to make a living during the COVID and, du- and during the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get unemployment because I'm technically a business owner and I'm not an LLC. I'm a sole proprietor. So, um, you know, not that that really matters to the audience, but, um, but I couldn't get one of those, you know, business loans mm-hmm. and, I couldn't get unemployment and then I just started getting flooded with commissions for you know I started this little series called the the uh, uh, ADHD air and space zoo and you know I've had that kind of side series going for a while just where I just pour all my goofy energy into (laughs) it you know like and like add your theme of your art but with some goofy elements well I mean it was just like random random creatures okay so with with all my rocket work i kind of really plan that stuff out Mm -hmm. you know plan the ideas out with sketches and you know make them into paintings i mean these are my small paintings you know whereas i've got way bigger paintings than that and uh i really plan them out yeah they take forever well these adhd air and space zoo paintings i sketch them out and have no idea what I'm going to do to them <laughs> and make them. It's just these insanely goofy creatures, whether they're robotic or, or not, you know? And then I started taking requests, you know, what animal should I do? Like people started like really paying attention to, to these goofy creations, I guess in a time of pandemic, everybody wants a laugh maybe. Yeah. And, uh, something to brighten up their day. They yeah. just had like some weird creature you would just add to your, kind of thing yeah like you know one of them's a you know I call him Frank the cybernetic battle duck and he's uh <laughs> this looks like a road runner with uh the ability to shoot missiles and lasers and he's smoking a cigar and he's running and uh, he's robotic and then you know people started flooding me with requests like one person you know asked for a, a, you know a robotic goat one person asked for a you know an Okay, so one person I used to work with asked for a, an, an otter drinking a beer in a silver spacesuit. And so <laughs> I thought, that's kind of really funny. So I did that, and I named him Commander Jimothy of Otter Space. <laughs> you know, they all have ra- really random yeah. names. And uh, from there, I just got flooded with, with requests for pet portraits. And wow. I, I once said, I will never do pet portraits. Because <laughs> I, I hated the idea of copying people's pictures of their pets and you know some people love doing that i don't well yeah. instead what they were paying me for was hey i really loved your your picture of jimothy can you make my cat or my dog in a spacesuit doing this or that or float chasing something through space or, yeah or whatever so and it was then, like you were doing pet portraits but not like the typical pet portrait yeah was, you, you would think people would normally buy or stuff right. like that i was i would say i was doing I've been doing what's called super wacky, spacey pet <laughs> portraits. Um, and by the way, the cart's about to roll across the floor. So it'd be a little loud in a few seconds, but that's okay. Okay. If you hear anything, it's 
Yeah. <laughs> we actually are recording at low mill right now, so like any noise you hear is just the building itself. So just be aware of that. Okay. Yeah. Or people rattling carts across the floor. It's normal. Yeah. But yeah, so uh Yeah, people started requesting all kinds of things and now I've gotten a bit a bit overloaded with uh with these requests and I need to hone in my <laughs> scheduling skills, yeah. you know, and but like, like it, it's, it's so interesting how stuff like that, like talking to everyone else I talk to that are in different industries or in different fields of uh, work, how they can, how the pandemic itself has brought out so many different sorts of business opportunities that like your business wasn't in pet space portraits, right. but how something like uh, COVID and stuff like that can basically bring upon these things that are probably big parts of your commission and your ability to make money right now. And it's just so interesting how like you just were like, I'm never going to do this, never going to make pay, pay, uh, pet portraits. But now you're kind of in a way doing that just in your own little twist. Right. And um, I don't mind continuing doing the pet portraits because they're fun. And yeah. I really enjoy them and they're a good source of being able to pay my bills. Yeah. But um, that is probably a spam call. Yeah. <laughs> uh, waiting on a customer to call um it's a it's, it's a constant battle of being an entrepreneur and your own business owner when you're having to try to sell things and do podcasts and videos oh at the same God. time yeah and, <laughs> and get prints made and ship prints and get all the framing taken it's, it's care a constant of battle just to finish my <laughs> frames and yeah um but yeah back to your question um it's a uh it's you know like I was expecting art shows this year, and honestly, I was burned out on art shows. I really didn't want to do any. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like 2019, I did the Panoply poster art and that kind of. I think that's the first. That's the first exposure I got to you, because so I actually have that. A in, lot of like, people found in, out about me. In, in uh, I, th I think it's at, at my house. I, I have it framed up. Oh, you have a print of it. I have a print of it. Nice. Uh, yeah. And that's like the first. Like I remember seeing that and think it was like the coolest, coolest thing ever like i think i've seen your artwork before like walking around low mill and just kind of mm. but like that's the, that's the first like actual painting or like that's the first print i've actually ever had of yeah. your stuff and i think that's kind of where my like knowledge of you kind of came from yeah um so i was um yeah i was, I was supposed to i was supposed to be at panoply again this was really funny um a lot of people were like dude, you should do the Panoply poster art again. Do it this year, too. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't do that. They want, they want a different artist every year, yeah. and I don't want to be that guy. Who, that guy that does it twice. <laughs> yeah, um, which I'd be okay with doing it again in the future if they wanted. But no, since Panoply got canceled because of uh, COVID, they ended up using my art again. <laughs> so uh, the same one from the year y before. You're kind of that guy again without actually wanting to be that guy again. Right, <laughs> but even though I wasn't even in the virtual show, I don't yeah. think. But, uh, but no, like... Um, I had I had a lot of shows planned out, and ironically, I had this sense that why am I even applying for this? It doesn't even feel like it's going to happen. And then, lo and behold, COVID happens. They all get canceled. It's yeah, kind of an intuition. Like maybe I should kind of thing. figure out what I want to do besides just doing these right. art shows. I mean, honestly, I I was just saying to friends and and to God, I am really tired of doing art shows. I yeah. really want to figure out a way to make a living doing this without having to exhaust myself with shows. Yeah, and. Uh, had several canceled, and about the only one I wanted to go to was uh, Space Fest out in out in uh, Arizona. Indoor show, don't have to set up a tent, and uh, and I'll I'll probably always want to go to that one because I mean that was one where, you know, in 2019 when I was at Space Fest, I ended up being one of the highest selling artists there, suppose like according to the lady heading it up, but. There was also a bunch of Apollo astronauts just hanging out at booths, you know. That's pretty cool. Shuttle astronauts, Skylab astronauts, and tons of people in the space industry that I was just blown away getting to meet, and uh, got to become friends with. So some of the artists in the show were like, you know, space art, like well-known space artists yeah. since the '60s. You know, uh, one of the guys did did art for Star Trek. That's um, crazy. Yeah, now I'm friends with him. And, uh, you know, but, you know, not to get too sidetracked, but, um, so I had all this stuff planned out 
you know, that I wanted to do. And, you know, honestly, Space Fest was the only one I wanted to do, but that got postponed to this year. And uh, other than that, um, where were we? What was the question? <laughs> uh, talking about the, uh, all the, how the art galleries and all the showings kind of got oh, canceled. Yeah. And then the one in Arizona was the kind of the only one that was, yeah. I guess, not going to get canceled or did it happen to get canceled after honestly, all? Well, it got postponed yeah. to this year, you know, and it's just with fine. everything I've else kept in touch back. with everybody. Yeah. I was just really looking forward to seeing everybody. But other than that, I was very relieved to get to just sit at home and paint for people, you know, these, yeah. So the, these pet portraits that I, you know, these goofy, spacey <laughs> pet portraits, I ended up just kind of seeing them as, kind of seeing them as practice for what I wanted to do. Yeah. And uh, it's getting loud. Yeah, they're coming closer now. Well, yeah. Um, it's supposed to stare awkwardly at the camera. We'll be right back with the podcast in a few seconds. <laughs> Um, no, nah, but, uh, it was, it was like, I've seen it as, as a way of, you know, really honing in my, my skills, practicing, I mean, especially with color, discovering color combinations I never would have discovered on my own, yeah. pumping out tons of art because honestly doing all these, all these rocket works, they take a long time, especially when I don't have a deadline, Yeah, you know, and then with these pet portraits, you know, they, they like them by a certain yeah. time. So you're, so you're, you, you, you're really having to figure out like what, what works best for them and how you can kind of create them, but also yeah. kind of add your own, own thing to it with yeah. also meeting a deadline, which is always much more difficult. But at the same time, learning how to make something that is super personal to certain people. Yeah. And I've had on numerous occasions, people say, when I gave it to the person that was getting this done for, they cried. Yeah. And I'm like, perfect. That's, exact, that's exactly, exactly what I Exactly what I want. Yeah. Like I want to make them laugh. want to make them cry. Um, and you know, like one I just finished was, uh, and it's not a spacey one, but this was an old cat wearing an old man sweater, drinking coffee from a bendy straw from a coffee mug that had a mouse skull and crossbones <laughs> on it. And he's kind of looking into the sunset, flexing his paws. You know, he's a lot of these pets are no longer around, and so yeah. you know, these people miss them. And but uh, but it's all, all these things are also just an opportunity for me to get, you know, to exercise my imagination, just get yeah. crazy, goofy, thinking way outside out the box. of the box, way out of the box from where I was. And um, so it's it's grown me a lot as an yeah, artist, definitely. And, and um, I've done way better financially, yeah. <laughs> which is like, it, it's crazy. Cause like stuff like that, like uh, coming out of COVID, you're, you're just trying to figure out what's going to work and to doing something yeah. like this, that's now kind of could be now a big part of what you do. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like an interesting thing. How can people, so I, I know like being an entrepreneur, like, I would say being an artist is probably the biggest entrepreneur thing in my, in my eyes. I, I, I put a lot of it very similar to like being like a, a, a a musician or just a, like a physical like painter or artist of any kind because you're really not only marketing your your own products you're having to market yourself right uh, what is one of the biggest things you've had to learn about being your own business owner being your own boss that you wish you would have known when you first started this um i'm gonna answer that one but uh <laughs> i mean so when I first started out, I had no idea, you know, of what I was doing except, hey, I'm in a studio with someone else's furniture and um, I'm just pumping out paintings and, you know, God, frames cost a lot of money. <laughs> and, you know, oh my God, glass costs money. Oh, and I got to do a business license. I got to figure out how to how do, do taxes. All, all the paperwork and stuff. Yeah, um, that's that's... Honestly, that's just the stuff that comes with the territory yeah. of doing business of any kind. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think the most valuable thing that I've learned, and this is not a learn the hard way kind of thing. This is learn by accidentally doing it the right way. Yeah. And, uh, and this is something that I would 
that I would highly stress to anybody is, you know, and, you know, and I'll, I'll preface it by saying this, a lot of business people are probably going to say, oh, that's a stupid idea. But, you know, if you're an emotional or intuitive type of person or a creative person, you know, whether it's music or art or, you know, you know, basket weaving, yeah, I don't know. Anything. Um, do what you love doing and you'll do that way better than doing something you think will sell. And when you do something really good, you're going to find that niche market. Yeah. And people are going to, people are going to flock to what you're doing or, you know, you're going to find the right audience. Um, it's like the whole adage. It's like, if you were good enough at something that's like, like, even if it's just a passion, some people think of the idea of like a passion shouldn't be a job, but if you love what you're doing and you're good enough at it, someone's bound to pay you for doing it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you're, I, see, I had this uh, kind of. There goes my phone. We'll <laughs> we'll hear it if it uh, if it vibrates. Perfect. But uh, we'll feel it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So. Uh, no, like. I always kind of had this feeling that. I'm so bad at the super structured analytical stuff. Like, I would not make a good accountant. <laughs> um, I'm super bad at, as a creative person, I owe it to myself to do something that's gonna, that I'm gonna be mentally and emotionally healthy. Yeah. Um, I think everybody does, but everybody, well, not everybody, but so many people, our society in general, just kind of overlooks mental and emotional health. And uh, so they tell you, pick a job, pick a, pick a profession that, you know, whether you like it or not, something that something that you're not going to r- rip your hair out constantly having to do. Yeah. Um, but they, you might not enjoy enough to you still want to be able to fund your other things you enjoy on the side, like having that right. job that basically is secure and safe. Yeah. But it, there comes a point where and this is my perspective and it, it'll some people might disagree, but there comes a point where you can sell yourself out to a company that you don't like, that you don't necessarily like going to work there so that you can have money to do the things you love. If you still have the energy after work to do it. Yeah. But then by that point, you also got to make that just a, a sometimes thing. If you want to have any kind of uh, social life, yeah, which community is vital. Yeah, definitely. And, but if you're really good at something, whether, you know, like for me, I was, I was a guitarist, you know, way more than an artist. And, um, honestly, I'm still probably a better guitar player than I am <laughs> an artist. And it's just that, uh, art kind of accidentally took the spotlight. And, um, I, my, my philosophy on it is if you're fascinated with something, and you're really good at it, you kind of owe it to yourself to see how far you can take it and Definitely. to see what you can do with it. And especially if, especially if you dream of doing that and you just, you're obsessed with it. Like, you know, I've always been obsessed with guitar, but then in recent years, past, I don't know, probably five or six years or so, I've gotten more and more fascinated to the point of obsession about art to where if I take a breather, from art for a day or two, which I need to do. <laughs> um, I'm taking that breather and then I'm, I find myself thinking, man, I really want to be painting right now. I can't yeah. wait to go back to painting. And I got so many ideas I want to get done. You know, not only do I have a lot of have to do for other people who've paid me stuff you just want to do for yourself. I've got a lot of, a lot of things I just really want to do. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's uh, just like the ultimate passion for it. I mean, like yeah. I, I think that bleeds over in your artwork and it shows when people are able to like buy it and you're able to see that expression they get when yeah. they are receiving the art. How can people support you and connect with you and what you're doing either via coming to your studio or online on like Instagram and stuff? Yeah. Um, Instagram is ethereal geometry. Weird name, cool, <laughs> cool art. Um, my photography on there is rogue underscore rocketry underscore photo. 
um, which that's a very different feel from my artwork. It's uh, more minimalistic <laughs> using, you know, aerospace hard abandoned aerospace hardware or, you know, kind of see it through the lens of like, no pun intended, um, of like abstract art okay. in a way. Um, whereas, you know, that's something that just kind of makes me feel a thing rather than, you know, have to wrap my imagination and my brain around it. Yeah. You know, it's it's a lot more easy on the imagination to just it's use a camera. Definitely. Um, you know, and then, you know, my my website is etherealgeometryarts.com. You can, t on, on Etsy, you can type in Ethereal Geometry Arts, even though I may be potentially switching my store over to my website. Um, okay. But... Yeah, I mean... You also have a studio at Low Mill, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're going to be moving? I'm currently in Studio 202. Um, I say 99.9% .9 sure I'm moving over to 2048 on okay. the North Hall. Um, over near uh, Susie's Popsicles and... Uh, or Susie's Pops and uh, Irons One Whiskey. Okay. Um, got the coffee shop. Dragon Forge Coffee, Yeah, I think? Dragon Forge Coffee. Got to give them a shout out. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, they're they're awesome coffee shop in the like at the end of the hall. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, those are kind of the best ways for people to connect and kind of see your art yeah. and even purchase your art and stuff like that. Yeah. And just coming by and seeing it at, at their studio itself and kind of meeting you and kind of seeing the place and yeah. all that stuff like that. For the love of God, don't window shop because then I'll tell you it looks better up close. <laughs> you know, and then. <laughs> can't tell you how many people I've said that to, and then they, they see that I noticed them, and then they walk away, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. Well, thanks again uh, for sitting down and talking with me. Yeah. It's, um, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and, you know, I, I know this is not a question that you asked, but something that I wanted to throw in there. Yeah. Um, you know, my art, you know, something I forgot to mention earlier, but my art is not about rockets. It's not about space. Um, that's just the imagery used. But what I really want to do is use that imagery of things I was fascinated with as a kid. And, you know, I was fascinated with jets and yeah. rockets back as a kid. But, but, you know, the turn my stuff has taken in the past year or two has been where I start using extremely vivid colors and, you know, kind of show some slightly eerie concepts. Um, but with a color palette that will cause you cause adults to see it through the lenses of how they saw it as a kid, you know, kind of remind them of that imagination they had as a kid. You yeah. Know? Like my stuff that's more vivid colored, people just love it yeah. w way more than they love the monochrome stuff, hmm. you know, that's way more than they love the, the dark and eerie. And, uh, and that's kind of where your art's kind of transformed into the last little bit. Yeah. Like, Honestly, I used my art kind of in the beginning as a bit of a, you know, a healing process, a healing journaling in a way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because my professor said it'd be therapeutic, and then she was right, it was. And then as it's caused me to kind of reflect and do a lot of, you know, unlearning of things and, and relearning of new things, spiritually speaking and, and, you know, emotionally and, and all that, um, it's caused me to where I really want my art to have a fun, adventurous feel, not a dark and depressing feel, you know? <laughs> like, I want my art to feel whimsical, slightly eerie, because, there, okay, so most of my dreams, or mo a lot of my art, especially my aerospace art, is inspired by by the types of dreams I have. I was having a lot of dreams of finding abandoned rockets, and then I ended up having a bunch of dreams of, uh, you know, other random things that were all taking place in, like, golden hour, and the city looked strange or flooded or covered in roller coasters or, you know. Just, all sorts of stuff. I got a crazy imagination. <laughs> People ask me what drugs I'm on, and I just tell them I go to sleep at night. And, <laughs> uh, but they, uh, I really want my works to imply that feeling of, um, 
you know, that, that fun adventure, feeling like a kid again, but in a dream world. Yeah. Um, which can be a little dark, but also really fascinating. Yeah, definitely. You know? So I really want people, I want to cause people to get back in touch with that side of themselves. The imagination you know? though, and everything like that. I mean, I, I, I think like uh, people will see pictures that I'll post of some of your art on, on, on Instagram when the episode comes out and they'll see the video and stuff like that. But I think, yeah. I mean, you definitely have to stop by and see at the studio for yourself. Seeing in person is definitely highly recommend and check them out on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Etsy, all the other means of uh, support. Uh, his art's incredible, and it's definitely something that, like you said, you just have to see it uh, in person, and it it it's it, it will change. It's uh, it's amazing. So thank you again for sitting down and talking with me. Uh, it's been awesome learning more about what you do, uh, the story behind your art, and I continue to look forward to your success in the years to come. Yeah, thank you.